Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Why Not Both, the podcast that's all about how our multiple passions inform our identity. My name is Pam Schaefer, and I'm a musician and therapist in Los Angeles, and I'm your host. Our episodes this season are brought to you by Under the Radar Magazine and produced by Laura Studeris. If you like our podcast, please make sure to like us and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. You can also hang out with us on social media. We are on Instagram and Twitter as WNB Podcast. This week, we got to interview Sudan Archives and talk to her about her gorgeous music, her wonderful snake, and about some pretty awesome fashion. I hope you enjoy this week's interview. So I'm here with Sudan Archives. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me over to your cozy home. Yes. We literally have tea and it's raining outside. This is perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it's been raining so much. I know. It's been uncharacteristically very not LA. I know. <laughs> I've just been waking up like... <gasps> We're so spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> like the rain makes me kind of sad. Yeah. But it's whatever. It's kind of like cozy vibes too. You can like... You know, watch Netflix, get some hot chocolate. It's kind of like Christmas vibes, right? Exactly. It feels very... This I, is our Christmas. It's very nesting. Yeah. I dig that. Mm. So... Oh my gosh, no worries. <laughs> so the first question that I always ask is, what do you do? And is there a better question I could ask you? Um, I just do me, you know. I've been yes. doing me since I was like 15. Because I feel like, you know... I love, I feel like I'm like, I feel like I'm like, uh, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little scientist yes. of gear and fucking with shit. I just fuck with shit and then it blows up. And this whole time I feel like I just been like fucking with shit and it's just been blowing up. I love it. But now it's starting to make a little bit of sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's what scientists probably do when they're making when they're trying to figure out the cure to something or making like equations or making, mm-hmm. they just, they have to like probably blow up a lot of stuff. I was going to say, you have to kind of like, in a way, like mess up a whole bunch and yeah. blow things up in order to find the end goal. Yeah, for sure. That's so funny. I'd never thought of it that way. Cause I would, before we started rolling, we were talking about gear and I was just like, ah, you're a gear scientist. But in a way, like with your other interests, you have to kind of mess about and then be like, oh yes, I found the thing. Exactly. Yes. Because you mentioned you love fashion and animals and music history and all sorts of things. I do. Like, I have a pet snake. I love animals. Like, when I wake up, you know how when you wake up and you get on, like, your phone for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. All I do is watch, like, animal Instagram videos when I wake up. (laughs) Because they make me so happy. (laughs) And I can't have a dog here because I really, really want a pit bull. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I can't have a pit bull is the reason why I want one because the misconception oh, of pit bulls, yes. like they think that, oh, they're going to tear up my home or, oh, they're mean and, oh, they're going to like, you know, they're dangerous, you know, mm-hmm. but they're not. They're actually really sweet and they're just misunderstood. Pitties are the sweetest angel dogs. They are so sweet and like, yeah, they're super sweet and. You know, people are just, landlords, I guess, are afraid of you're not being able to, like, take care of them and walk them a lot, and I'm mm-hmm. on tour all the time, but I love hiking, and I will wear that dog out. I wonder if there's, like, a rent a pit bull service where you can go and, like, volunteer. I've and, like... been wondering if there is, because I just want to have one. Just, oh. I just need dogs around. Dogs are just, do you ever play music to dogs? Like, have you ever played a song to a dog? No. Oh, my gosh. I, when you said pit bulls, I totally dog sit for one of my friend's pit bulls. And when I start playing the piano, she comes over and like yodels at me. <laughs> like, you know when you see videos on Insta of like yeah. all those like studio pets that just like relax and chill and sleep? Oh no, her dog comes over and is frantically wagging her tail and making like puppy yodeling sounds. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to video it because I'm, like, playing while she's doing it. But, like, animals' reactions to music is fascinating. Well, I've never played animal music before. 
I was gonna say I I don't know enough about snakes, but do you chill with your snake while you're writing? Yeah, I let. Sometimes he just chills in my neck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But um, yeah, you should you should see him. I'm excited. What's your What's your snake's name? Goldie. Goldie. Mm -hmm. What kind of snake is he? He's a ball python. Whoa. Yeah. That's intense. It is. <laughs> nice though he's so nice he's so sweet yeah today he's supposed to eat today <gasps> <laughs> i would love to hear about what it means that it's, it's feeding day today what it means it means that i have to go get a rat and i have to get to my snake so he can eat him. but i'm just always so sad because the rats are so cute i was gonna say at the pet shop do they have like because rats are actually quite quite smart do they have like different sections for like the rats that get to be snake food and then the rats that don't. <laughs> Not really. Wow. Yeah, those rats, because at first he was eating mice. Yeah. But he's getting bigger now. So, yeah. He needs rats. Oh and, my gosh. Um, the rats are a little more aggressive. <laughs> I was going to say, like, when, because mice are relatively docile, but rats are pretty, they're pretty intelligent, so they yeah, might be able like, to get away from. They'll fight. Yeah. Yeah. But usually it's just so quick, you don't have I don't understand what's going on. Wow. <laughs> How often do you have to feed Goldie? Every week. Oh my god. Once a week, yeah. Wow. What do you do when you're away on tour? I have um somebody come over and just feed him because yeah. he doesn't really need attention. He doesn't right. really care about that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to be in a ball all the, all the time. He just wants to be cozy. Yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. What led you to get a snake i don't know i just like, was at a pet shop and i just went in there because i love going in pet shops whenever there's mm -hmm. a pet shop i gotta go inside uh-huh so uh -huh. um i saw like some parrots and they had no cages they were just walking around I was like, oh, this is so what? Cool. <laughs> and then i remember i saw a snake and i don't know why i just thought that the Pet shop was a little janky, so mm -hmm. I was like, I just felt so sad for the snake, and then I just like, I want it. Oh, you're like, you're coming home with me. Yeah, that's amazing. How long have you had him? <clears throat> I've had him for like maybe not even a year yet, but maybe like going on six months. Or something oh wow, like how old is he now? I think he's like a year and a half or two years. How big do they get? Uh, four feet. They can get up to four feet. Oh my god, that's like. That's... I think he's like one foot and a half now, or maybe two. Wow. I don't know. I'm only five feet tall, so that's like. It's gonna <laughs> yeah, get he's gonna be almost as big as me. Oh. Yeah. That's like, gonna be cool. Oh my gosh. We'll have to do like a follow up in a few years yeah. and be like, so Goldie's the size of Pam. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how big he's gonna get. I was gonna say, like, how big are they, like, around, like, the girth? Like, how big is he now? His width is, like, this big. I yeah. Guess, you know, and then he's like... <gasps> oh, my gosh. That's gonna be fascinating. Do you notice, like, when you come home from tour, like, when he's bigger? I don't really notice when people say that he's getting bigger. I don't know why it's hard for me to yeah. notice. I think he's getting bigger. He's definitely. getting bigger. That's amazing. So, if you weren't, like, touring as much, do you think you would study more about animals? Yeah. Yeah. I would probably want to, like, be a part of some type of, like, foster care program. Aww. And, like, help dogs find homes. Yeah. Because they do that. One of my friends that I follow on Insta, she fosters cats for that reason where she'll kind of help, like, socialize them so that that way they can find better homes. Because sometimes when people want to adopt animals, they already want them kind of, like, pre-trained. Mm -hmm. But if an animal's been abandoned, they might have, like, negative behaviors and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I would love to do that. I can imagine you with like a whole bunch of pit bulls. Me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want a bunch. And I want to take them on hikes. Yes. Dogs well, are so fun. Dogs are the best. Did you have Did you have any dogs growing up? Yeah, like a little terrier poodle. Oh. His name was Travis. But he Travis. was so aggressive. He was like a bandit kind of dog. Oh. And he would just bark at dogs all the time and always try to run off and catch a duck and Chase Wait, a duck catch a and, duck? He'd always try to jump in the lakes and just bite a duck. 
was so annoying. Travis, that's not the way ducks are mean. Yeah. Ducks are so mean. (laughs) I'm guessing Travis never actually caught a duck. No. Okay, that's mm-hmm. probably good for Travis. Yeah. <laughs> that might have ended badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's also funny because it's like the smaller dogs that are the ones that are more like, they feel like they have to like prove themselves. Because they have small dog syndrome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's also a thing. And I feel like just people and <laughs> energy is like, oh, you know. Oh, that's so funny. So you were mentioning when we were chatting earlier that you'd also studied ethnomusicology. I would want I wanted to because yeah. I was at community college and I was like had a goal if I um did my associates here mm-hmm. I planned to go to UCLA because that's the best school for ethnomusicology yeah and I really wanted yeah I just had that goal and but now I still kind of study ethnomusicology but on my own terms in my own time mm-hmm. I've like learned so much from other ethnomusicologists who have you been studying Francis Bebe is like oh, an ethnomusicologist oh. and. He is like the pioneer of African electronic music. Ooh. Ooh. I was like, I don't know anything about that, so tell me more. <laughs> He's from Cameroon and mm-hmm. he plays like a bunch of different instruments and he makes like like he he fuses it with electronic music and um it's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. He has he also is like an author. He has like some mm-hmm. books on just like some love stories and he has like a book that I I have both of the books, and he has this one book about string music. Oh, yeah, because you blend a lot of different things in with your music. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's kind of what informed what you're doing now musically? Well, yeah. yeah. Him? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, when I... He was probably the one that helped me create my own fusion. Mm. Because there's a lot of people that I take inspiration from, but it's not like they're doing this fusion thing. Like, there's this artist in Sudan who plays the violin and sings at the same mm-hmm. time. But it's very, like, traditional folk music. Mm-hmm. It's like, Sufi music almost. And then, um, you know, there's a lot of violinists around the world that do this, like, playing and singing in their mm-hmm. own way. Um, and But this guy, he kind of has incorporated electronic music. And he's he's very psychedelic. Oh, too. wow. Yeah. Yeah, because you were saying you have, like, a whole electronic setup. Like, what what is your setup currently? Um, It's an SP404 drum machine, and that's where I usually have my drums and instrumentals. And then I have a loop station, and then I have a whole guitar pedal just for effects for the violin. Oh, um, my gosh. Guitar pedal board. Yeah, like, that makes total sense that you take inspiration from him because I was thinking about when I was listening in the car. Like, you can hear some of the loops, but then, like, the rhythms that you're using are definitely not from Western music. So it's this really interesting fusion of Western and African music. Yeah. I'm like, I want to nerd out about that. Yeah. I don't even know if it's, like, Western percussion. I, I just feel like that's just it's some weird experimental percussion. Because, you know, it's not like I studied the drums. It's, like, more so was influenced by all of these, like, African artists with the string music and their Mm -hmm. approach to kind of just like their strong song structure, Mm -hmm. how they can have their string instrument of choice and then their voice and how it like kind of like goes back and forth and the structure of that. Mm -hmm. But like with percussion and stuff, I feel like it just comes from just like taking a bunch of like psychedelics and just like making drums. And just making things happen. You know? (laughs) And people are like, this sounds like South African music. And I'm like, Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think, because you've traveled a bunch, do you feel like things that you've, like, discovered in your travels have maybe informed some of the things that end up coming out? Um, probably, because, I mean, I traveled here to L.A. Yeah. from Cincinnati, and then that's how I was able to kind of, like, experiment even more, because there was, yeah. like, a really, there's, like, a really strong experimental beat scene here. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that had a lot, a big influence on me, and then, mm-hmm. um... When I went to Ghana, probably that did something, too, because they have, like, strong um, beat patterns that they use in all their music. Right, right, right. You know? And, um, yeah, probably just, like, the... Even way, way back, I was playing Irish jigs. That's how I learned violin. Oh, my goodness. So that's... And those are fascinatingly different genres. It's fascinatingly different, but it's definitely very similar. Like, Irish jigs. 
mm-hmm. African folk music, they all play off of the same scales and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's well, just like they, all, they all make you want to move. Yeah, they all make you want to move, but they always they all have a jig kind of style. Yeah. You know. And when you were traveling in Ghana, like, did you, how long were you there for? Oh, uh, just like a month. Yeah. Did you go, like, what did you see there? I ask because that's a really interesting thing when you were talking about, like, the different influences of, like, oh, this ethnomusicologist and then traveling here and traveling there. Do you feel like you picked up anything special there? Because I think, didn't you film a video there? Yeah, I filmed the music video yeah. there. But I originally went there right when I got signed to Stone's Throat. I had already planned on going there because I was volunteering for a nonprofit, oh. and we basically raised money for their first school bus, and then we were going out there to basically teach, um, like, DIY production. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, and we brought some pushes and some laptops, and we uh-huh. just, and then um, we brought someone who worked at Pandora, who knew the title worked Ableton really well, uh-huh. and then we went there and just kind of, like, had fun. <gasps> That's amazing. Yeah. What did, like, who were you teaching? Who were we teaching? Uh, yeah. Like, K, kindergarten to maybe, like, um, fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah. What did they think of it? They were, like, having so much fun because they already play, like, hand drums and like, mm-hmm. drums with the sticks. Mm-hmm. So once we told them, kind of, like, it's the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. with your fingers, they were just, like, killing it. <laughs> I was like, gonna... <laughs> right? I was like, uh, they'd be the best beat makers. Yeah. Wow. And what did I was thinking about that you're like, oh, I got to teach for this nonprofit. Like, I was thinking kind of of when I started the podcast, like why people think that especially if you're a musician or you're an artist, that's like the only thing that you do. But I feel like that's such a, like a small fraction of what we do. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the other things that you feel like you do that do inform your music, but, like, the other things outside of just strictly music? Like, if someone's like, oh, what do you do outside of that? Right, yeah. I just love... I feel like I'm more of, like, a visual artist than anything, you know? Mm -hmm. I love putting together, like, mood boards. I love helping people bring their visions to life and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, because the nonprofit that I worked for, I was helping with, like, the creative side of it and, like, the perks of what you get when you donate and we did like yeah. the CD compilation that you would get as a gift if you donated a certain amount of money Ooh. and I like to um I love fashion I love like I, I just love fashion I guess yeah I love I feel like the outfits you choose on stage can really like project the yes. performance and stuff you know and um self-care I love just taking care of myself and Putting, mixing together my own products for myself. Ooh. You know, that's fun. I was wondering, I was like, oh gosh, I have two questions. <laughs> I was wondering, what are some of your favorite things that you've worn on stage and what do you feel like they project? Um, The favorite thing, probably this designer named Abdel mm-hmm. El Tayyab. He's from Sudan and his, the story is even more of a reason why I like wearing his stuff, but his his clothes are just as great but Mm -hmm. we met in Paris and Uh he came to one of my performances and he found me because of my name and where he's from it just kind of like sparked an interest so he Mm -hmm. came to my show Mm -hmm. and he was like got really into the music and basically was explaining that he is trying to incorporate um Sudanese traditional wear with modern wear and mm. he feels like, in a way, that's what I'm doing with music. And mm-hmm. he would think that he thought that mm-hmm. we would make a really good team with like fashion. And he can, he wanted to make me clothes. Oh my god! And then um, I was like, okay, how about you make me a dress for Coachella? <laughs> Just and casual. He was like, what really? And I was like, yeah. So he basically that's amazing. Yeah. So he basically flew out here for my first Coachella gig <sighs> performance, and he no dressed way. me, and it was like amazing. Oh my gosh. The dress was like hand woven, um, hand woven material. And he just like, it took him like 300 hours to make it. It was like, whoa. It was crazy. That's intense. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. And like right now, I'm like, you're wearing this like amazing color. <laughs> and like, how would you describe that color? Do you want to know what I Oh, this? Yeah. I guess neon is yellow green yeah because it's like it's not quite green but it's not quite yellow it's like right in between do you want to see what i'm wearing for vegas uh yeah (laughs) 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh my gosh. My child looks like a salon. What do you think? Whoa. Oh my god, it's amazing. I'm like, I want to touch it, but I'm like, like, oh my gosh. Okay, how do we describe this to people? This is the most like, it's like these black, beautiful feathers that the have this gorgeous a iridescence. Black rooster. <laughs> black rooster. <laughs> That's like, oh my gosh. But can you see it? I can a hundred percent. Now like, I get the eye makeup. Yeah. Okay. Because you're wearing this amazing, this like beautiful, like black winged iridescent eye makeup. That, oh. I was kind of scared for wow. this look because it's kind of like one of those hate or love looks. I mean, I love it, but I love that it's dark and yet iridescent at the same time. And the feathers, they don't look like... I love how on the shoulders they make almost like kind of like like an epaulette. It looks like it would go like this way. Mm -hmm. Like it would make this beautiful design here, but then it goes back down at the yeah. arm. Um, wow. Because like one of my friends was like, I hate it. Like, what? You know, and then <laughs> one of my friends was like, that's hard, you know? Yes. So the fact that it brings, it doesn't matter if you like it or you hate it, the fact that it, it creates a strong emotion. It sparks such an emotion. Because right. it's such like a classic silhouette, but it's completely covered in feathers. Yeah. And like, you never see that. You usually see feathers as like an accent. Uh-huh. Oh. So the fact that it's like you hate it or you love it, but either way, you strongly hate it or you strongly love it, <laughs> that's what makes me want to like, okay, I want to wear it. You're like, I want to do it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see like photographs of you performing in that. I'm kind of nervous though. I don't know why. It's it's a bold <laughs> statement. <laughs> like, <laughs> that dress is like 0% casual. Yeah, but I feel like I don't have nothing else to wear, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, I have to wear this floor length gown covered in I feathers. I just have to make it work. Like. Fuck it. Oh my god, that was okay. That makes the eye makeup make like complete sense. Because when I walked in, you were like, "Yeah, I've been experimenting." It looked almost like like feathered above your eyes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'll have to show you a photo of. There's a character in a graphic novel called The Wicked and the Divine. Mm -hmm. That's a goddess that has very similar. Like she she sometimes breaks into almost like um, it looks like a a flock of ravens or mm -hmm. a murder of crows. Like, she'll sometimes break into these, like, beautiful birds. And I'm like, boom. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Amazing. It. And it's going to be, it's so, like, gloomy these days. So it's the perfect dress for the weather, right? Yeah, because that would, I, if you said, like, I'm wearing this to Coachella, I'm like, you might melt. Yeah. But if you're wearing it in the winter in Vegas, I'm like, no, you're perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so cool. I know. Do you get to design a lot of your own stuff that you wear on stage? Like, do you collaborate with other designers? Yeah, like, I collaborate with Abdel because he's a fashion mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have a really, like, collaborative relationship. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I'm just, like, finding things that I really, really am drawn to and trying to see if I could wear it and, like, yeah. pull it for the show. Yeah. But um, it's been kind of, like... It's really hard to get into that world and establish relationships with like designers and stuff and right like um but I feel like I'm starting to get a hang up hang of it now mm -hmm. like for mm -hmm. this designer Evan Clayton um mm -hmm. I was just looking on Instagram and I was just like liking a bunch of stuff and then I was like wow his work is crazy he was like this is the one that caught my attention the most but a yeah. lot of his stuff is just just as amazing and I reached out to him like hey I was just like you know what fuck I just kind of like. Yeah, you're like, I'm just going to do like, it. Show, I'm going to, like, I'm going to reach this? out. And he's in um, fucking Canada or something, I think. Oh, wow. So he's not even super close Wait, by. is it Canada or is it? No, it's not Canada. It's, um, I want to say it's around. Oh, maybe it is Canada. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Canadian, he's a Canadian designer, I think. And he was like, I was telling him to have a show in Vegas. And I was like, can you, um, you know. I was like, I really want to wear this dress. Yeah. I love it. He's like, um, well, I can't do any custom looks right now, but I can send you my, I can send you what you what you see on Instagram right now. And I was like, Whoa. oh, really? Okay. He just sent it to me. Wow. And three more outfits. And That's I was like, crazy. Why was that so like easy? You just have to like reach out to people. Huh? I mean, it sounds like also if you reach out to people whose stuff resonates with what you're doing, and they see like they're like, oh, I see what you're doing. I'm gonna send stuff to you. I think, like, that's when it's always, like, seamless. 
Yeah. Because if it's someone that, like, doesn't really match you, then, like, I don't think it would work as well. Yeah. But that, like, oh, my God. He's amazing. He does a lot of stuff for drag queens, too. Ooh. You know? Like, he's just, like, intense. Like, his work is just, like, so good. Well, looking at how that's designed, I'm like, I'm like, I don't understand it, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I feel like if you're going to be on stage by yourself, you got to be wearing something like that. Well, and that's, it's a lot of pressure when you're the only person that's on stage. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to somehow create all the sounds, you have to create all the visuals, you have to bring like all of the energy. You just had this look on your face. Oh. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about it. You just, you just, I just envision myself in that dress like by myself. I was like, oh shit. How am I going to do this? You're like, what have I done? <laughs> but with things like this, like, when you, when I, I feel like when I'm wearing a dress like this, it's very like, you you're um like it was hugging my hips so tight it's almost like Mm -hmm. i can't just move around a lot well you have to like move a different way like you have to move like with with the feel of the dress yeah it seems like you'd have to be kind of like slinky yeah you have to be slinky and you have to be like very like move like a geisha like Mm -hmm. very so i love watching geisha videos Oh my gosh. And like, that makes total sense that like fashion would then kind of dictate like what your presence is on stage. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like mind blown. Because I'm thinking now like, okay, this set has to be very eerie, very Mm -hmm. alluring. Like I'm thinking like the beginning of the set, it could just be me walking back and forth Mm. across the stage Mm -hmm. and like have some drums playing. Like you need some type of like beginning. Yeah. You need to kind of like set a mood. Yeah. To be like, I have arrived. Mm -hmm. Because that looks very much like, it's interesting that we were talking about your interest in like animals and zoology. Because I was like, that looks so, in a way it's almost very like naturalistic. Because it's completely covered in feathers. Yeah. Like it's almost animalistic in a way instead of just having it as an accent. It's just like, nope, I am actually a winged creature. Yeah. I was thinking of even putting feathers on my nails <gasps> so they can have like these like feather claws. Ooh, so that you can, when you gesture, you can yeah. see. Oh. Do you ever Still wear like headpieces? Oh my God. I have been researching. I just feel like I'm really picky about headpieces. Mm-hmm. But um, I haven't figured out the exact. I feel like what I want is I want. Um, I've been doing this thing where I'll like wrap. Let me show you. Yes. <laughs> wrap my hair like I get my hair uh-huh. braided uh-huh. all the time and when I redo my hair I'll cut the hair off and get it done again uh-huh. and I've been like wrapping it in chopsticks <gasps> and stuff whoa and then basically you can put your hair up and you can like make these like things whoa but and it looks like it's, it's all your hair your head. exactly because yeah. it's your hair yeah <gasps> And then it's like, it looks like you have this hair sculpture on, but it's like, whoa, it just takes a lot of time. But I envision yeah. like having, oh my God, because then more it's more like hair sculpted pieces. Well, and also the fact that since it's already your own, like you said, it looks organic because it, it is from your own hair. So that way, instead of having to actually have all that hair attached to your head all the time, you can make the sculpture. Yeah. And then when you're done, you can take the sculpture off. Oh, wow. That's some genius stuff. <laughs> so I feel like I'm so into that like I'm so into like how it looks the yeah. visual aesthetic like I even just got a microphone made mm-hmm. and um a microphone stand mm-hmm. and it's a snake like <gasps> instead of it being straight it kind of curves Ooh. and just that when you take pictures makes a huge difference it's like, a huge difference and what are you drawn to like snake symbolism in general? Like, I mean, you have now I am because yeah. it's like he's a logo. Like Goldie's like my theme yeah. for the album. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that especially now because people, I mean, like you and I met under such like random circumstance. <laughs> like we were playing mm-hmm. at, like a clothing shop at Echo Park Rising. Yeah, and I was so like years sh- ago. Yes, <laughs> I was just like, look at us now having tea in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember my set. Your set was like, it was so beautiful. And I, I think both of us were probably really nervous because I don't remember my set either. I yeah. just remember it was my first time using Ableton and I was like, oh, hope I don't die. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's like a photo of me, I think, where I'm like, literally, I look sweaty, not because it's like hot, but I was like so nervous. I was yeah. just like, okay, that's fine. Um, But yeah, I was thinking that like, I mean, that's how like I discovered you, but then... 
most people are going to discover you through images. And so that makes total sense that you'd really want to focus on like, well, what image and what symbology brings out my music? That if someone saw, for instance, like you in that dress, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I get this. Like, I'm going to check this out. Right. And that makes total sense because like not everyone can be sweaty and nervous in a clothing shop. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Like, I hope I'm not sweaty at that show this week. Like, put that dress on because it's going to be like in a dome tent. Just think like Iceland (laughs) thoughts. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> just like frozen north. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, when I met you, I was I was in grad school and you were studying and like, it's interesting because I think about the fact that like I do have like I guess what people would call like a day job. Like I am a therapist, and I think about that that like people, I don't know, almost like look down on having like a day job when you're a musician too. Like what yeah. you know, like. Because you probably worked, like, a gazillion jobs while you were doing music, too. Yeah, like, I had two at the same time. I was, like, making donuts, serving coffee, waitressing. Yeah. Um, working at an Italian boutique shop. Yeah. Why do you think, like, because I've never looked down on people for that, but, like, in the U.S. especially, people, like, are sometimes ashamed to be, like, oh, I'm a musician, but I also, like, work at a cafe. Or work yeah, I don't know. It's It's, like, almost, like, it feels like, You have this pressure, I think all people in general, even not even artists, like you just have this pressure to be this at this certain level of success, a certain level of financial stability. Yeah. You can't you can't be like all over the place. It has to be like this is just one thing that I do. But no, I can do a lot of other things too. Exactly. At the same time. Like I don't have to just do this one craft. Exactly. Like when you're talking about like your stagecraft and when you're talking about animals and when you're talking about fashion, I was just like I could totally see you doing, like, all of those things. Yeah, like, I even want to um, get my own, like, I'm really into just, like, styling and um, mm-hmm. hair and makeup. Like, I really want to, like, be on set for editorials and be Ooh. a part of shoots and stuff. Like, Yeah, because you said you were getting into fashion stuff. Like, what, you know, because you style your own stuff. Have you styled other people yet? No. <gasps> but I already feel like I, I could be good at that thing. I think you'd be excellent at that. Yeah. You have a really good eye. I love bringing people's ideas to life. And, like, I can tell I love, like, you know, figuring out people and creating, like, a visual story for them. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, who are, like, do you see artists now that you're like, oh, my God, I'd love to style them? Hmm. I'd love to style. I would love to style. Definitely has to be, I would love to style some female artists. Yeah. Some female alternative artists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, because like that would be like a first, a really easy first gig, like something mm-hmm. that I'm used to, because someone similar to me, maybe, like in yeah. the same kind of like genre. Yeah, because then, especially because I would guess that you'd have to really get into like their musical world and then be like, oh, this is what this looks like visually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Have you ever had other people style you? Other artists? Yeah. Um, well, my friend Fatima, she's like my best friend. She's um, She styled me before. I really like her because she's really like, she just gets me. She's mm-hmm. just like, like she styled this. Like, this is an example. Like, <gasps> this is like a leather Whoa. corset. Wow. Look at you. And she styled me for that. The and that is exactly, it's like the perfect, you know, kind of theme because I'm really into snakes and stuff. And she found that like kind of alligator looking. I was going to say it looks almost like snake skin. Yeah. And the way that it's styled then with your braids and then your eyelashes. Mm-hmm. Like all the, that's what's so interesting looking at this, like all the little details that go into it. Because it would be one thing if you were just wearing the corset, but then, like, your makeup matches, your hair matches, mm-hmm. the sleeves match, like, everything is, like, so unified. Yeah. Stuff like that matters, I feel like. It just makes you feel so much more confident on stage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like in your time as an artist, like, you've definitely learned, like, your own image. Mm-hmm. But what if there were artists that, like, I thought that was interesting when you said, oh, I could style someone else. Like, what if someone was, like, really heavy on the music, but they didn't know, like, really how to make visuals? Yeah. Exactly. That would be cool. I was just like, oh my gosh. 
I want to see what you would come up with. <laughs> yeah, I really want to get into that. That'd be fun. That'd be really fun. Especially for like, I can just see myself doing a lot of editorial shoots because it's like, mm-hmm. if you can do stuff that you're not supposed to do, it's right. just for the photo, you know? Right. Because you don't have to like, I feel like people sometimes don't get that if they see a photo of an artist and they're like, oh, do you just walk around like that? And you're like, no, you probably can't like walk very far. Yeah. <laughs> It's like no, you're gonna you're gonna make a really cool image of that, but you're not gonna wander around exactly. like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a cool. I was just like, that's cool to think of it that way. Cause yeah, like, why do you think like people do say like, oh, well, if you're a musician, you probably shouldn't be doing like editorial shoots or studying animals. Like, why do you think people want you to be like just a musician? Um, I don't know. Naturally, people tend to just want to put you in a box because it's like almost a way that they can comprehend and just like make sense of things like yeah this is this and this is that yeah but that's not what really life is about you know exactly exactly like even thinking about all the different genres that you were talking about that informed your music mm-hmm. I like that in some ways you're like oh they're actually really similar but it's like I'm trying to think of how to phrase it it's like if you could only put it in one box it makes them seem really different. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you can see them in a bigger box actually makes them similar. Yeah, exactly. The fact that they're spread out and not contained, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And now, like, would you say that you're kind of making, like, a living full-time doing music? or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> that, when did that happen? Probably... A year or two ago or something? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Because, yeah, you said before that you were... were before... The last job I had was at yeah. a donut shop. I was like, which donut shop? Donut Friend. Are you, are you still fond of Donut Friend, or are you, like, tapped out on donuts after working at Donut Friend? I, I mean, I was never really fond of donuts <laughs> in the beginning. I think that's why it was good to work there, because if you like donuts like that, you just going to go crazy on the donuts, right? <laughs> Like, I would just like bring all the donuts at work. Uh-huh. I mean, to my, I would bring all the donuts to the label because I remember I was about to get signed there. And, uh-huh. I, and I would just bring them all the donuts and they loved me. I think that's why they signed me. I'm like, this, <laughs> this bitch. You're like, need she the donuts has to keep coming. The... <laughs> You're like, and that is my advice to young artists yeah. get signed by bringing all the donuts. Yeah, bring the donuts. <laughs> You're like, yo. We gotta keep these donuts coming, man. These Let's are just find really her. Fancy donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so fancy. I've gotta say, I I definitely have a place in my heart for Donut Friend. Like, <laughs> they are the first place that I went to that like I like I can't eat wheat in the US. I'm yeah. like allergic to wheat here. And they have gluten free donuts. Yeah. And so I hadn't had a they donut do, since I was do. a kid. Yeah, they do. And it was so Those good. Those gluten free donuts are good too. They were so they're actually good. actually kinda better than the donuts itself. Really? Because yeah. I've never had one of the donut donuts. Yeah, they're kind of better. They're like softer, like breaking your hands. Like yeah, yeah. So I accidentally lucked out then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, so you you signed you signed a deal based on donuts. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't resist the donut. What's it been like just working on music? Like, what is that like to have that be like your sole income and your sole job? And like, it feels weird because it's like sometimes I wish like. I need to do something else to make money. Like, this is weird. But it's like, I mean, shouldn't I just focus on my craft now? This is kind of what I want, right? It's like this weird battle. Yeah. Because like, but I don't want it to be, like, my job. I have to be doing something else on the side to make mm-hmm. it feel like it's fun. Because if nothing is fun, I just quit it. <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like if you don't feel, especially with music, I can't imagine ever working on music and being like, well... I guess I'll work on this for two hours today at eight o'clock in the morning. Just like, you know, then it would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, who does that? There's got to be someone. There's got to be someone that that works for. I don't know them, but I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure there's it's someone. It's like you don't ever know when the inspiration comes. Like, so you're, you're on a work schedule now. Exactly. Yeah, because, like, if you have a label deal, because, like, I guess, like, people tuning in, like, some might be musicians, some might not be, like, what does that mean if, like, you sign to a label? Like, what? It means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they basically just put out my music, and they help me tour mm-hmm. for promotional tours. Mm-hmm. But all the money I make is off my shows. Oh. Like, a lot of the stuff I can't see because it's just, like, yeah. I don't see it. 
But um, yeah. So it's like very inconsistent. You never yeah. know you're gonna get paid. It's like right stressful as fuck. I rather work at a donut shop. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get this much on this date. Yes. Sometimes I want to be like, yes. "Where's my money? Where's my money? I'll make donuts." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, because it sounds like you would get paid like when you tour or like if you license something. Yeah, I think licensing then... is um how a lot of big artists make a lot of their money off. Yeah. Of. But um, I've never really gotten licensing. So. Hmm. No. Maybe like a commercial, like a little yeah. Apple ad on an iPhone, yeah, or Instagram or something, but. Um, I feel like a lot of people probably make um, make their money off of like those commercials you see on TV. And yeah, stuff. like the bigger ones or yeah. like film trailers or like things like that. Yeah, film trailers. Yeah. Like movies. Yeah. Netflix movies. Because I would imagine then also it would get really tiring if your main <laughs> income is touring because touring is like exhausting. Okay, so I just got back from like a month tour and it was like every day. Wake up, do a show. Go to sleep, wake up, get on the plane. Do a show, go to sleep, get on the plane. I did that for a whole month straight. Mm. Like, usually it was, like, off days, but this one was no off days. There were no off... Oh, my God. Yeah. So then I came home, and then two days to myself, my family came in town for, like, <laughs> <laughs> a week for Thanksgiving and stuff. Yeah. And then, right when they left, right when they left, I have two days. Tomorrow, I go to Vegas to do the show. Oh my to do the God. festival. So it's basically just like, you're like, how do you even know what city you're in after a while? I don't even know. I don't even know what date is. Thursday? Is it today Thursday or Wednesday? No, Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I had to think about that for a second. I was just like, <laughs> that's a great you even question. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, and I don't have an excuse. I've been back in town for like three weeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, because I think that's another thing that people, like, sometimes underestimate is they're like, oh, well, you make all this money on shows, but it's, like, it's it's very, it's disorienting, and it's, like, it's kind of, like, it takes you out of any sort of everyday routine of, like, you're, like, I don't know when I'm getting paid next. I don't yeah. know where I am. <laughs> and I never get to, like, just chill at the place that I'm, like, paying rent at. Like, I'm yeah. thinking of moving to a studio just because I'm never here. Oh. And so I can save money. That's true. And um, I've never like had a consistent income like this and been mm-hmm. in a place where it's like cheap dirt. Right. And I, like, right. I wonder how much money I would save if I was just not really even paying rent for it or just paying like... Yeah, little... just paying for a studio. Yeah. Well, and especially like a travel writer that I know, like she pretty much will just like crash at friends or things like that. And she was debating renting like a small studio for the same reason because she's like, if I'm traveling most of the year... Why would I spend my income on a place where I'm not actually staying? She was just like, that seems kind of silly. Yeah, and I really don't want a roommate. Yeah, that's, I'm in the does same boat. Does this place seem like, well, because like I live with my boyfriend too, mm-hmm. but does this place seem like a couple and then a person could live in here? I don't know, it's kind of tight because the bathroom is just. Yeah, honestly. It feels like it's only for a couple, like. And especially, I feel like, I mean, my bias is like my entire living room is my studio. So if someone lived with me, it would be really annoying because the main rooms are like the living room that connects to the kitchen, then a hallway, and the bedroom. So I'd be like, oh, can you just hang out in the bedroom for like eight hours? See ya. (laughs) Like, I think that when you're a musician also, people underestimate like how much gear you have, practice time, writing time, like all the things that you need space and like quiet time to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm very pro you having like an escape pod studio. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. So I was thinking just like moving because of that. I mean, this place is really cute and it seems like it would be perfect for like one person who is a musician or two people who like aren't musicians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a basement though too, which Ooh, is cool. And, and it's that's... about this amount of space, this whole space. But I don't know. Do you feel inspired when you're down there, though? Not really. Okay. Yeah, you look kind of more like the basement's a scary place. (laughs) It's a storage place. Yeah, you're like, no, that's not where I want to jam. Yeah. That's so weird that there's a basement in California, though. They're hard to find. That is weird, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Wow. I was like, that's actually really interesting. (coughs) Yeah, people don't fuck with basements here. No. No, because they'd flood, they'd cave in during earthquakes, they seem spooky. Yeah. 
hasn't flooded at all. Even though we've had like kind we've of like flooding vibes, it's yeah. never, no water gets down there. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So how would you, like, if an artist was like, okay, I'm just starting out, like, I want to get signed, what should I do? Like, I mean, one, donuts. Um, but yeah. how would you recommend someone, like, kind of, like, find their sound? Find their sound? Yeah. Um, to, to probably stick to your their roots. Because you never mm-hmm. know, like, what did you listen to when you were, like, little girl till high school? What were you listening to? That's probably the root of your sound. That's actually a really good suggestion. Like, what what were you listening to? What my mom was listening to, what my big sister was listening to. My big sister loved R and B. She loved B two K. She loved Destiny's Child. My mom mm-hmm. loved N D I R E. Eric Badu. You could say I have a mix of that too. Some mm-hmm. people say that. So that's funny because I was just like, oh man, that explains so much. I was like, my dad was listening. To a lot of Bach and Beethoven. My mom was listening to show tunes. And my sister was listening to like. Simon and Garfunkel. It definitely made like all of my elementary school classmates. Listen to like Simon and Garfunkel's collected works. On the bus. No one was excited about this. I was excited. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was like. Hello. This is poetry. Are you listening to the (laughs) harmonies? And everyone's like. Why is this happening to us? That's that's really good advice. And what would you say to people who think that they have to only work an artistic job? Because it sounds like there's actually benefits of working other jobs while you're working an artistic job. Yeah, I mean, when I was working as a waitress um, at Good Girl Dinette, um, that's how I met label owner. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So you never know who you meet when you're working at these jobs. Like, right. Yeah, put yourself out there somehow. Well, yeah, I think that I think people sometimes have the illusion that you can like chill out alone and make good art, and someone's just gonna like find you. Yeah, and you're like, no one's just like, huh? If only I could find that person hiding in maybe their like slightly murdery basement. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like getting out there. I was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> Leave leave the murder basement. That's my professional <laughs> advice. <laughs> For sure. I'm like, yes, this is an inspirational podcast. Leave the murder basement. <laughs> I guess, like, what would be any, like, final wisdom that you would want to impart to people about following multiple passions? Um, I guess, like... Find your base, you know, find your base, you mm-hmm. know, that's your baby. And, but don't forget about those other parts that make you you, like, you know, yeah. like water those too. But just um, kind of like think about it as like, what do you call it? Think about it as, I don't really know, maybe like a house or something. Like you got your base uh-huh. and then what's uh-huh. your roof and what's the size of the house. Uh-huh. You can still have all of that going on, but just yeah. have a center. I like that. Kind of like, I think of kind of like the idea of having like like a hearth in the center, like something that's like warm in the center, or like a yeah. heart, which actually sounds like hearth. Never put that together until now. <laughs> Maybe related. <laughs> it's like in the middle and then you build out from there. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me on Why Not Both. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now let's nerd out on Ableton. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Why Not Both. Please make sure to like us and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. That way you get all of our upcoming interviews and you can also go through all of our fun old ones too. This season of Why Not Both is brought to you by Under the Radar. Under the Radar is a nationally distributed print, music, and entertainment magazine and website. You can find them at www.undertheradarmag.com and feel free to support them on Patreon. If you want to come hang out with us on social media, we are on Instagram and Twitter at WNB the podcast. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. See you next Wednesday.